Greetings from my classroom, European history scholars. Uh, apologize for the glare on the board. Hopefully you can see the talking points. Um, again, I'm new to this video lecturing, so uh, bear with me. I'm gonna try to break this up into 15 minute segments um, so that they will fit on YouTube, but we'll take uh, intermittent breaks um, after uh, about uh, 15 minutes or <clears throat> 10 to 15 minutes has elapsed. Um, so these are the notes that correspond to um, chapter 29. Uh, we're almost to the end of the course's uh, content. Uh, but today I want to talk about devolution, detente, and the thawing of the Cold War. Um, you have dichotomous forces at work in Europe uh, as the 20th century came to a close and the 21st century dawned. Um, you have a, a continuous uh, integration of Europe that began immediately after um, World War II uh, when Churchill gave a speech in 1946 in which he said that the future of Europe is a United States of Europe. Um, and that was really one of the first articulations of this movement of European integration, uh, which ultimately uh, developed into the European Union. So you have those forces at work on one hand, but on the other hand, you have devolution, uh, where uh, nationalism inspired countries to celebrate their uh, separate identities. Um, Northern Ireland is um, certainly an, an example of that. Uh, the Catholics in Northern Ireland wanted Northern Protestant Northern Ireland, which was uh, part of um, the United Kingdom, Britain, Ireland, or Britain, Northern Ireland, um, Scotland, and Wales. But you have Irish Catholics in um, uh, Northern Ireland who wanted um, those four counties uh, known as Ulster um, uh, to join the Republic of Ireland and be part of Ireland. And, um, you know, the old saying goes is that the 30 years war was the last religious conflict in Europe, but that's not true. Um, until very recently, uh, Protestants and Catholics um, attacked one another violently in uh, Northern Ireland, and the Irish Republican Army was responsible for uh, a number of terrorist attacks in Britain, um, specifically in England, in the areas around London, um, uh, where they would uh, set bombs off that would kill people. It's, it's quite tragic because, um, in my view, uh, there isn't much that um, there, there isn't much of a difference between Protestants and Catholics. It seems to me um, very um, odd that uh, at the end of the 20th century, uh, Christians were killing one another over small differences in, in doctrine. But nevertheless, uh, that is what happened. Um, a, a, an agreement um, to establish a, a national assembly uh, was first um, forged in 1998, but um, the first, the, the, the permanent national assembly uh, in Northern Ireland that would give uh, Northern Ireland uh, a greater degree of autonomy was not established until 14 years ago, uh, 2006. Uh, we see a similar trend in um, France. Uh, France gave uh, Corsica uh, much more autonomy. Um, Corsica is still part of the French state, but essentially is self-governing now. Um, 
we see the promulgation of a federal constitution that divided Belgium into uh, three um, um, regions uh, separated by um, language, uh, the Flemish region, uh, the Walloon region, which is a French-speaking region, and then uh, Brussels uh, became its own separate entity because Brussels is the capital and populated by both Flemish uh, speaking peoples and um, French speaking peoples. Uh, Scotland got its own parliament uh, and a greater degree of self governance in 1997. Um, and you see devolution at work in Spain. There are Basque separatists there. And there's a movement for Catalonia to become independent um, from Spain as well. Catalonia is that region uh, where Barcelona is uh, near the French border. They have their own separate language, although most of them do speak Spanish. But they um, wanted to uh, celebrate their own uh, identity. Perhaps the most tragic uh, manifestation of this devolution movement um, it took place as Yugoslavia uh, disintegrated um, and there was a campaign on the part of Serbians led by uh, Slobodan Milosevic, who was a former communist, uh, to rid Yugoslavia of ethnic Albanians in what they called ethnic cleansing, ethnic cleansing. Uh, it was genocide. Um, the problem with Yugoslavia is that it was so heterogeneous and the different ethnicities distrusted one another uh, so much um, that only a really powerful, uh, charismatic leader like uh, Tito uh, could hold the state together and after Tito died in 1980, uh, Yugoslavia essentially began its slow uh, disintegration. Um, Bill Clinton is really credited with creating a shaky peace in uh, what used to be Yugoslavia and putting a stop to um, the ethnic cleansing uh, through the application of force by NATO. Uh, but Bill Clinton and uh, General Wesley Clark are really the architects of the um, campaign that ended uh, Slobodan Milosevic's um, crimes against humanity. Um, he was captured and uh, placed on trial in The Hague um, in the International Criminal Court of Justice, um, but uh, he died in the midst of a trial, so they never reached a verdict or sentenced him. So um, Yugoslavia uh, essentially became uh, a number of different countries. Bosnia and Herzegovina managed to stay together. Uh, Croatia became a separate country. Macedonia, Montenegro, uh, and Serbia. Well, Macedonia became a separate um, country. Montenegro. Uh, stayed joined with Serbia, and then uh, Slovenia uh, became a separate country as well. So now I want to talk about the um, thawing of the Cold War. But I guess this is a good stopping point. We'll take a short break and then we'll, we'll proceed. Uh, with the thawing of the Cold War.